Today we're gonna to talk about autophagy and why this big word might be the most important part of preventing cancers, heart diseases, immune-related problems, and to gracefully age. This is a huge factor. Autophagy, the mouthful of it, is uh, something that won a Nobel Prize. 2016, it was awarded a uh, Nobel Prize for work understanding this phenomenon. So over these last several years, we really started to understand the power of it. And the word itself, when you break it down, auto and phagy. Uh, so autophagy, self is auto, and then phage is to eat. So when we put the two together, it's literally cells eating themselves. Sounds a little weird but it's a phenomenon in your body that they started to understand by watching it under a microscope. At first, scientists thought it was a pathology. They thought it was some kind of disease that they were witnessing. My gosh, the cells of the body are eating itself. Why would it be doing that? Come to find out it is a normal process of your and I's body and is incredibly important. And we're doing things every single day to stop that process. And I'm going to give you the key to speeding it up and getting the most benefit and activating autophagy inside of your body. So when a cell in your body, you're just ultimately a bunch of cells, 30 trillion, 70 trillion, depending on your size, cells piled up and you just need materials in order to continue to build more of them. So when a cell is low on materials, it eats itself to provide the materials for the next cell. It's so efficient and so friendly, these little cells that are neighbors. When your body properly does that, right, it increases detoxification. It has been shown to increase your immunity, which I'll show you in a moment. It lowers your insulin levels. If you have uh, areas of the body that are uh, like saggy skin or buildups of, of toxic areas, it's going to help clean all this out. It is the recycling system inside of your bodies. So every single day, your liver, your lungs, your skin, every day, your, you know, every 14 days, you get a new skin layer. It rolls over. Your heart's about six months. Your stomach is about 90 days, which means the person you are right now is not necessarily who you'll be six months from now or 12 months from now. And that is very encouraging news because if you can feed your body cleaner materials to make better cells and get more efficient at building healthier cells, you could be a completely healthy person, different healthy person, and with completely healthy organs six months from now, a year from now. Now, the key to it is that this recycling system needs to be optimized. It gets very inefficient. The body needs new raw materials to build cells every single day, and it can get it from food or it can recycle it from material that's left over in the body. It's recycling system, right? So if we're constantly eating, then the body doesn't have to get very efficient with its recycling program. We're always feeding it new lumber, if we were to use this analogy, to build new homes, which are our cells. And that lumber yard is stocked full of lumber. We eat three times a day. We eat five times a day. We are constantly putting in lots of carbohydrates, lots of proteins, which are broken into amino acids, which help build the structure of these buildings. But we're constantly feeding that to the body. So it just ignores the recycling program and kind of lets things build up. Also, it can be very wasteful. I grew up and I worked on a construction uh, crew and I was the ground guy because I was the youngest. I was in my teenage years, uh, but it was my summer job and I helped out and I was kind of the runt of the crew and I would have to run around with the wheelbarrow and they would throw the scraps off the top of the building. Now, if, if you know, lumber or supplies were really tight, they were very creative as to not waste anything. But when it was more abundant, there would be entire boards and extra shingles that would be thrown off the roof and it was, it was a little more loose. That's a great analogy for how we are when we have just lots of material, lots of food coming in. Our body doesn't have to be efficient. Not only is recycling not done, but there's a lot of excess waste. So if we abstain from eating, we cut off the lumber yard supply then the body has to find its own material, has to use the scraps, has to get creative, has to crank up the recycling program, which cleans up the body. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So what the body does, and this happened one time with construction, uh, when, when lumber got real tight 
and they were out of two by fours. And so we had to get creative, right? And take another form of wood, a different size and cut it down in order to finish the project. But we got more crafty. We were stretching materials to, to fit and using scraps as much as we possibly could. In worldwide shortages of lumber right now, that stuff's happening. We're getting more creative to use it. That's exactly what your body does. It sends out contractors. These are your white blood cells. And it sends them out to find more material. This is what aids your immune system when it comes to autophagy. And if we can eat less, we shut off the lumber supply. Now your body has to go to work and it's the white blood cells that goes to find it because the first thing that they're gonna do is they're gonna go clean up tissue. It issues, tissues that you've damaged, uh, areas of abnormal cells or cancer cells, uh, microbes, viruses, things that have built up in your body. It's gonna start to recycle these out. Excess skin, if you have you know saggy skin from weight loss, one of the best things you can do is abstain from eating and utilize fasting to clear this out, to clear out microbes in your body. So you can see how the, all boats rise, the white blood cells are going into mega cleanup mode and your immune system's getting stronger. There's more garbage out of the streets. There's more you know scraps that are cleaned up from the yard, right? Viruses and microbes are going down and it cleans up all that garbage first. And this is why it's so crucial when it comes to other diseases because heart disease is oftentimes a buildup of plaque inside of the heart. Um, the, the buildup inside of your brain, Alzheimer's, the buildup of abnormal cells that just won't die, cancer. So you can see how it directly ties to decreasing these chronic diseases that a lot of us are scared of. I've had family members with heart disease, cancer, and Alzheimer's. The best thing I can do to prevent going down that same road is to abstain from eating and crank up this recycling program inside of the body. So let's talk about what stops it then. And we've talked a little bit about what helps it. Okay, so autophagy is stopped when we put in a lot of sugar. Sugar would be the filling up the lumber yard. Two by fours galore, shingles galore. Right? That's sugar, just packing it in. Protein would be next because your body does have the ability. It needs healthy protein, but if you get too much of it, it can actually use that and convert that into that more sugary carbohydrate source. So it still has the raw materials it needs and doesn't have to activate recycling if we're putting in sugar, if we're putting in protein. Fat does not have much of an impact on it um, because of the way the energy is processed. It burns very clean. It doesn't leave a lot of the waste behind at all. Protein would be next best and sugar would be the worst. Sugar burns like diesel inside of your body where uh, you know fat is gonna be more like a, a you know the, the stove. You know, it's gonna be right red hot, you know, the blue flame that you're seeing. So fat, not so much. Stress also stops it. So the more stressed you are, the more belly fat you're gonna produce. It's gonna slow down this whole recycling system. So we wanna lower carbohydrates have a moderate form of clean protein, and then we wanna lower our stress levels. Now, what helps autophagy? Your age, the younger you are, you just naturally recycle better, right? That maybe didn't help very many of you listening, um, but it's true. Number two, we can move our bodies, especially high intensity, low duration exercises, activates this recycling cleanup program inside of our system. Lowering our carbohydrates, very important because there's going to be less of that rich material, sugars and protein, and we're gonna be going more towards healthier fats. And then the ultimate way to do this that just might save your life is fasting. Sustaining from eating, abstaining from eating for periods of time, curbing your consumption is what I call it. It's one of my five main guidelines for food um, that I regularly teach no matter what type of eating plan that you're on, if you're a vegetarian, anti-inflammatory, whatever it is, keto, you can use fasting to lower down these sugar levels. Now, if you do intermittent fasting, Okay, that is uh, one place that you can start. But before I go there, we need to balance this out. We, need, we don't wanna overdo either one. We don't wanna overdo intermittent fasting or any type of fasting. Okay, I don't want you to just stop eating in general. So I do need to say that before I go into the ways that you can get fasting going. And then we also need good, healthy, raw materials going in our body. We need nutrients. We've just generally overdone the amount of material that we have, and we want to just curb consumption and balance this out. So feasting and fasting, feasting and fasting, right? That's a good balance for the body. That's how it would have been if you would have lived a thousand years ago and you're stuck in the wilderness. You might go a day, you might go a couple days without eating, and then you would enjoy the nutrients that you got. They, none of them would be processed. They would not more than likely be really high, high carbohydrates or the carbohydrates that your body could process. So when you look at 
having a grocery store on nearly every corner now, we have so much material, we have so many lumber yards, this is what's creating the issue. So we wanna lower the carbs down, okay? Then we wanna start implementing some fasting. Now intermittent fasting, you would go 18 hours without eating, and then you could start implementing the uh, noon to six. You might have lunch, you might have dinner, that's it, then you go 18 hours again without eating. You're gonna allow your body to use the material and then start to search for other material because your red blood cells, they are, your body is cranking out red blood cells every single minute, millions of them produced every single day, so you're always producing new cells, so if you have food and material during those six hours, the other 18, you're gonna start tapping in to this recycling program. And then you could go OMAD if you wanted, that's one meal a day, I do that often, or I'm just having dinner. So I'm just working and focusing throughout the day, I'm in autophagy, and then I have one meal at the end of the day, or you could do one meal at lunchtime. And so you're extending that 18 hours to almost 23 hours that I'm going in between eating. Then you can go into actual fasting, longer fasting. I know we call it intermittent fasting, but this is where you're actually doing a day, two days, three days. And this is a concept called rotational fasting, which I have entire trainings on to help you through it and it allows your body not to plateau, keeps a healthy balance so that you can stay in autophagy way more, really get massive cleanups, anti-age, lower your risk of cancers and heart disease, and strengthen your immunity. So if that bit video was beneficial for you, comment below, um, hit the like and the follow button for the page as I will keep delivering these simple concepts that help make health simple so that you can be the solution for your own health. Check out some more resources that I have for you right here as well.